If you're building a new PC or just upgrading your graphics card, for example, uh, you're going to need a good power supply that can handle it. And uh, even though choosing your power supply might not be uh, the most exciting part of your PC building adventure, it is actually one of the most important ones because a good power supply will keep your system running stable and it will keep your other components nice and safe. So uh, you should definitely put some thought into which power supply you're going to get. And in this video, I'm actually going to talk about uh, how you can pick the right power supply for your system, uh, what sort of wattage you need, and which features you might want to invest a bit more in. Before I start, I do want to give a shout out to Seasonic that was kind enough to sponsor this video. Now, I've been using their power supplies in most of our test benches and most of our personal systems as well for the last decade, pretty much. And I do believe them to be uh, one of the most reliable PSU manufacturers. But everything that I say and mention in this video uh, also applies to other reliable PSU brands you might be looking at, so not just Sezonic. And I would call it more a generalized guide and not really brand specific. With that in mind, let's begin. The first step I always take when picking a power supply is to filter out any uh, less known or unknown brands or manufacturers. Proven reputable brands have plenty of uh, reasonably priced models and it is not really worth buying from an unknown brand that might have cut some corners to uh, reach an even lower price or maybe pulled some other tricks to get a really high wattage rating while skipping on quality or safety measures. And I'm not saying that all unknown brands will be bad, but you should definitely do proper research to make sure that they are safe and that they are reliable. That being said, it is extremely difficult for a reviewer to properly judge the quality of a power supply without testing it, while the hardware required to properly test it is extremely expensive, like uh, several tens of thousands of dollars. So finding proper reviews of less known brands is really difficult and getting a faulty power supply can fry all your other components. So if you just want to make the right choice right away without spending hours on research, the easiest step is to just filter out the unknown brands and stick to uh, well-known names that have been making power supplies for a long time and have built a very good reputation. So brands like Corsair, Cooler Master, Be Quiet, uh, Seasonic, of course, and so on. Now, the next step is choosing the right size of your power supply. So the two main sizes that you will be looking at are ATX and SFX. Uh, there are a couple of others like TFX or Flex ATX, uh, but those are very niche and not something that you will usually go for. ATX is your standard size that fits the majority of midsize and larger tower cases. And generally speaking, uh, you can pick any popular ATX power supply and it will physically fit your typical case. But some high-end, high-power power supplies can be a bit longer than the regular ones. So if your case is on the smaller side, you should definitely check the specifications of your case and if a certain model will fit before buying it. Also, you do need to make sure there is a couple of centimeters extra for all the cables to fit in as well. Smaller cases might require a smaller SFX power supply or SFX L power supply, which is actually a slightly longer variant. And unless your ITX case specification clearly mentions SFX L support, you should just stick to the regular SFX models. Now, some small form factor cases will offer both SFX and ATX support, for example, which does sound great in theory, but if you go for the bigger power supply, uh, you will have less space for other things like storage, uh, GPUs, or uh, certain types of cooling. So do keep that in mind before buying a big ATX power supply for your small ITX case. The next thing to decide is how much power you actually need, and this completely depends on the specs of your computer. Now, the main component to look at is your graphics card, because a lower-end GPU, like an RTX 5060 or RX 9060 XT, will use somewhere between 130 and 160 watts. Uh, Mid-range options, like an RTX 5070 and RX 9070, uh, sit closer to 230 watts, but a high-end card, like an RTX 5090, can actually use up to 600 watts and sometimes even more. If your card is not in this list, the GPUs will usually have a TDP value in their spec sheet. And while TDP is not exactly the same as their actual power use, it is usually very close, so you can use that as a good approximation. 
The other big factor is your CPU. And again, there are big differences in power use between different processors. A Ryzen 7 7800X 3D or a Ryzen 7 9700X will use between 75 and 80 watts when fully stressed. A Ryzen 7 9800X 3D will use about 150 watts. Previous Intel Core i9 CPUs were extremely power hungry using up to 300 watts, but the current generation of Intel Core Ultra processors and high-end Ryzen CPUs can easily use more than 200 watts too. Now the power usage of your other components like the motherboard, memory, cooling, uh, storage, peripherals, and uh, RGB accessories uh, doesn't typically affect your power supply choice nearly as much. Uh, if you're making a server with more than 10 hard drives, for example, that might up the numbers a little bit. But generally speaking, if you add about 100 watts uh, for everything else in your PC, uh, you have enough of headroom for most gaming or workstation builds that you can think of. So if we add the GPU and the CPU power draw and then add about 100 watts, uh, you can roughly calculate the total wattage you need. In reality, the actual power draw will often be a bit lower because uh, games or other various software will not typically fully stress your CPU and your GPU at the same time, but you want your power supply to be able to handle the worst case scenario. So uh, here are a couple of examples. On the lower end, if we take a Ryzen 7 7700 that pulls about 80 watts and an RTX 4060 that pulls around 130 watts and at 100, that gives us 310 watts in total. Most decent power supplies start at 500 or 550 watts anyway, so that will be more than enough for a system with these specs. If we have a Ryzen 7 9800X 3D and an RTX 5070, for example, the calculation puts us at just under 500 watts of peak usage. So here, 550 watts will be enough, but I would go for a 650 watt model to get a bit more headroom. And uh, I'm gonna explain why a bit later in this video. If we go a bit higher, so with a Ryzen 9 9950X that uses around 200 watts and a good third-party 7900XTX that will use around 400 watts plus 100 for everything else, that puts us at around 700 watts of peak usage. So 750 watts would be fine, but I would aim for 850 watts for a bit more headroom yet again. Or if we go for a Core Ultra 9 285K that will peak around uh, 250 watts and an RTX 5090 that can pull up to about 600 watts plus 100, we are at around 950 watts, which means that a good 1000 watt model will be able to manage this system, but I would again aim for a bit more headroom and then grab a 1200 watt model for this combination. And there are a couple of reasons to go for a little bit of headroom. Uh, first one is to deal with the higher power spikes that can happen and that you might not see in the average power consumption numbers. And then especially so when it comes to higher end graphics cards. So you should definitely play it a bit safer and add some room for that. Also, every power supply is more efficient when it's not running at full load. Uh, they're usually the most efficient, around 50% of load. At 60 to 75%, they're still more than fine, but you don't want to pull 850 watts on an 850 watt power supply all the time. Uh, it creates more heat, it creates more noise because the fan will have to work harder to get that heat out, and it will just put too much strain on the power supply and on your system as a whole. So as a rough rule, you should try to aim for your system to use that 50 to 75% of the PSU's rating. You should also consider possible upgrades in the future. So if your budget is a bit tighter at the moment, uh, but you do want to upgrade to a higher tier GPU next year, for example, uh, give yourself a bit of headroom with that in mind. On the lower end, the price difference is also very small. So even if you only need a 550 watt power supply, uh, if you can pick up a 650 watt model for $10 more, uh, that is not a bad investment if you plan to upgrade your system in the future. One very important thing to remember is that overclocking can increase a CPU and the GPU power draw significantly. So if you plan to do some serious overclocking, you should definitely give yourself a good amount of extra headroom for that. Now, 
We have chosen a good brand that we trust. Uh, we know the size of the power supply we need and the amount of power we need. So uh, let's talk about some other features that might also be handy. What I look for in a new power supply is that it is listed as ATX3 and PCIe 5 compatible and that it comes with a new 12 volt 2x6 power connector. And then especially so if you're going to use an NVIDIA GPU. The newer 12 volt 2x6 connector looks the same and is compatible with the previous 12 volt high power connector, but they're supposed to be uh, safer and easier to connect correctly. Then you need to decide whether you want to go for a modular power supply or not. Now a traditional power supply has all the cables connected to it, so you use the ones that you need for your components and you need to cable manage the rest. While a modular power supply comes with separate cables that you need to plug in yourself, so you only only have the ones that you need, which saves you some space and it definitely saves you the time you need to do the extra cable management. There are semi-modular versions that have essential cables connected to the main unit while the uh, extra cables come separately like the SATA and Molex cables that you can then plug in and use if you need to. Uh, while a fully modular power supply is the nicest and generally worth paying a little bit more for because uh, you have the freedom to fully customize the a combination of the cables you need. In the high-end segment and with most the new ATX 3.1 models, uh, most power supplies are fully modular anyways. And uh, even with more affordable series nowadays, uh, more and more models are becoming fully modular. But it is extremely important to remember that you should never ever mix and match modular cables from different brands of power supplies or even different models from the same brand because the cables might be coming from a different manufacturer, for example. Uh, that can actually break your power supply and even fry your other components. Not to mention it is actually a fire hazard. So only stick to the cables that your power supply came with. That being said, you also want to make sure that the power supply that you want to buy uh, comes with all the cables that you need to connect everything in your system. If you follow my advice on the power rating, you will generally get everything you need but for some specific builds, uh, either with a lot of hard drives or with multiple GPUs, you do want to make sure that you have all the connections you need. Uh, most brands will have a proper overview of all the cables you get on their website. Another feature I personally care about a lot is keeping my system quiet, especially when in idle or when uh, you're just browsing the internet or doing something very light. Uh, higher end power supplies very often come with a fan stop mode, which means that the fans will completely stop spinning during lighter loads. Uh, the Seasonic Prime and Focus models, for example, come with a button on the back that lets you enable or disable it. And in my opinion, it is a great feature to have. Efficiency, which is usually marketed using the 80 plus labels, is not that high on my list of features because uh, modern power supplies have become very efficient and it is actually hard to find a decent power supply that isn't at least um, 80 plus gold rated, uh, even in the lower end segment. And uh, even with our super high power costs in Europe, it is unlikely that you can ever save enough of power by buying a platinum or titanium rated power supply to justify spending a lot more on one of those. Plus, a lot of modern power supplies are actually more efficient than their label suggests. The new Focus 850 watt Gold, for example, actually passes the test for a platinum rating. So generally speaking, you should expect to see 80 plus gold rating on most power supplies that are worth buying and going for platinum and titanium is nice if it doesn't cost too much more. It is also important to remember that the 80 plus label itself only looks at efficiency and nothing else. So it is not an indicator of quality and features in any actually possible way. So I don't think that you should completely ignore it, but please don't put too much value in 80 plus labels. When it comes to premium models uh, in general, I don't think that you really need them. Uh, if you want a good 850 watt power supply, for example, that is uh, nice and quiet and has modular cables, uh, you're not going to notice a difference between a nice Focus or Vertex models compared to the more expensive Prime models. If you're buying a high-end rig that costs uh, thousands of dollars or euros uh, or you're spending two thousand dollars or more uh, to just get the new RTX 5090 for example, you're probably not going to care about spending 20 or 30 euros more on a higher tier power supply. It might get you some benefits like an even longer warranty, a slightly improved efficiency and typically a tiny bit less noise. But in the lower 
or mid-range segment where you can still use that extra money on a better GPU or a CPU upgrade or some more storage, for example, I would definitely get those things first. So you do want a very good and very reliable power supply, but you shouldn't stress too much about a more expensive top tier models. And my final advice would be not to get too distracted by marketing fluff. Uh, newcomers to the PSU market do tend to throw a lot of terms into their marketing about heat sinks and cap quality and fan bearings and so on. But those things mean very little on their own. Uh, more heat sinks and a new design fan do not mean that the end product will be good. Also, if you do end up buying cable extensions to match your build, please make sure you get good quality ones as well and not order random stuff off AliExpress or something like that. So to summarize, when picking a power supply, make sure that you stick to a reputable brand, use the table to calculate how much power you need to run your system efficiently, uh, consider the form factor, uh, try to aim for a recent ATX3 uh, PCIe 5 model with new 12 volt 2x6 cables, and consider some of the nice to have features like uh, lower noise, extra warranty, different cables, and so on, and then pick something that meets those requirements and your budget. That's it. Now, as usual, if you have any questions or you need any help with your PSU decisions, uh, please do leave a comment down below and I'm gonna do my best to try to answer them all. And if you want to support this channel, please don't forget to subscribe so you never miss my future uploads. And I don't know, maybe consider buying a power supply using the affiliate links in the description down below. Thank you all for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye.